Okay, we are back. Um, again, please forgive my my nasty voice, but we're almost there. Uh, velocity mode maps. Um, back to this. Uh, uh, we talked about the type of maps they are. The change is always up and down. It is never side to side. So if you notice, the color changes from the black line up, the black line down. Never side to side. And we're going to learn that map in a minute. Again, everything towards the transducer is above the line. Below the, trans below the line is away from the transducer. Now, in this case, red is towards the transducer. Blue is away. Here you will notice from that black line, it's a little darker, then it's red, then it gets yellow. Remember, this is slower to faster. This is uh, dark blue, then blue, then light blue. Slower to faster, but away from the transducer. Now, you have this map over here. You have blue above, red below. The blue is, is towards the transducer. The red is now away from the transducer. Okay. Notice that this is just solid blue. This is solid red. You have multiple reds to yellow, multiple blues to light blue. Sometimes you see almost a green. If it's just blue, like in this case, or just red, it is simply just direction. Okay. The other type is a variance mode. Uh, this provides a little bit more info when compared to the velocity mode maps. You not only have direction and speed, but you also distinguish laminar flow from turbulent flow. And if you look at 1920, you will now see that not only do we have the up and down, as with velocity maps, but we also have the side to side colors from left to right, just like you're reading. It goes from laminar to turbulent. Uh, the colors on the left indicate laminar. You see how smooth and even this red is? And the colors on the right are turbulent. It turns into kind of that greenish yellow type color. So from left to right. Okay. Same thing down here. Nice even blue. See how they change from left to right to that green. Laminar to turbulent. Left laminar, right turbulent. Again, you still have towards and away, but also that left and right laminar to turbulent. The variance mode map colors change up and down as well as side to side. <coughs> now, this is the fun stuff, but this is very easy. We're going to predict flow directions. <coughs> and you will have pictures just like this on the registry. In your book on 316, uh, through the next couple of pages, you're going to have some examples and they want you to determine using this map uh, some answers that they have. So this is how with a a sector shaped image, notice the sector or the fan, if you follow along in your book uh, you're going to use this color Doppler image to answer the questions regarding the direction of blood flow in a sector shaped image. <coughs> And this is how you do it with any color flow image that is sector shape. First examine the color map. Look at the color map. This is the map. Okay. Remember everything above the line is towards, everything below is away. So in this case red is towards, blue is away. Um, identify the color presenting toward top color, top of the color map. In this example, we just said is red. Next, identify the away color. We know that's blue. Now, look at the vessel. Let's do the top vessel first. Okay. Uh, 
you place your finger in the vessel on the now let me back up a second this is no <coughs> excuse me this is no different from from reading a page or looking at a picture this is the left side of the screen this is the right side of the screen and everybody should, should see that left right okay it's very important uh, now look at the vessel you're going to place your finger uh, in the vessel on the toward color and then slide your finger to the away to the away color so let's do the top vessel the the, the, the example is going to say what is the direction of flow in the top vessel in this image so you're going to look at the color map you know this is left this is right you're going to look at the color map and you're going to say all right towards away so <coughs> you're going to if this is the center you're going to put it on the towards and then slide your finger to the away color what is the direction of flow in this vessel left to right start with the towards slide your finger to the away left to right the direction of flow in this vessel is left to right okay that is simple let's do the bottom same principle applies we look at the color map we have red blue towards away left of the screen right of the screen this is constant towards away is a constant the colors may change <coughs> but the above the line is towards below the line is blue so we're doing the bottom vessel what is the direction of flow we're gonna put our uh, finger on the towards slide it to the away the bottom vessel is now flowing right to left <coughs> excuse me Lord have mercy uh, this is constant for any time you see a sector shaped image it is that easy now we're going to look at predicting flow directions with rectangular images and what we're going to do is uh, we're going to follow certain rules for rectangular shaped images now you see the rectangular image you also have the rectangular box <coughs> and it will be steered <coughs> if you will a certain way this one is kind of slanted down this way same with this one you may see it slanted down this way either example it will work so the rules to follow are simple we have to create a reference called home <coughs> excuse me uh, this is an imaginary transducer location the way we set the home is we look at the vessel we see the color box is steered we look at the two top corners okay and what we do is let's look at this one first this is in reference to the same image but the two top corners we draw lines down the one that is not touching anywhere inside the box you see this example if I draw a line here I'm crossing through the box if I draw a line directly down here I'm not touching the box that is the home okay this is very easy that is our home reference okay that is the line downward in the corner of the steered box that does not run into the color this is the imaginary location of the transducer now <coughs> here's what we do uh, in this case the vessel is blue the away color on this map so you place a finger on the blue color move it away from the home line and that is the direction of flow in the vessel this is my home line I slide it away from the transducer my direction is from right to left in this example okay your finger moved from the right side of the image to the left 
so the flow is from right to left. I found the away. This is red is towards, blue is away. I determined that this vessel is flowing away. I found my home line. I slid my finger away because that's the way the blood's going. It slid from right to left. Very easy. <laughs> so let's do this example. Uh, well, I blew that one, didn't I? The answer's already up there. But just pretend like it's not there. Um, I have my box, right? And I just extends it. It extends down here a little bit. It's kind of cut off. But you can tell if I draw a line through there, it goes through the color. Here it does not. There's no color there. This is home. This is towards. This is away. So this is away from the transducer. So I put my finger on the home. I slide it away from the transducer. This is right to left away from the transducer. Now, do you, what's the difference between this and this? Notice the color box has been flipped. That's okay. That's why red is not always towards and blue is not always away. There are going to be instances where this color box has to be flipped to keep the vessel anatomy correct. <coughs> Most of those machines that we have will do that for us. It only just keeps, it just, it just eliminates a step so that you don't get confused. So make sure the first thing you do is you look at that color box, you figure out what the, what the answer is from towards and away, find your home, slide your finger because this is away, that way, this is slide it away from home, right to left away from the transducer. Very easy. Another example. In which direction is the red vessel? So we see our box. It's very light but you should be able to see it. Again, is this my home? Nope, because that downward line is going through the color. Is this my home? Yes it is. So I'm going to put my, my finger here. I'm going red vessel. <coughs> so now I know that red is towards. So what do I do? I slide the blood towards the transducer, towards my home line. It is going from left to right towards the transducer. Very, very easy. Uh, this, is, this is exactly the way the registry will ask. This is exactly the way I will ask. Um, it's, it is what it is. It just helps you understand what you're doing and which way this color is moving. And we'll talk more detail about it when, when I get back. But we really won't have to because you got it. There's nothing else to think about. The rest will be when we get into the actual scanning part. So between rectangular images and sector shape images, you should color flow images, you should be able to determine direction of flow simply by evaluating the color map. <coughs> now, I will say this. Let's pretend that you get a picture on the registry and they say in which direction is the red vessel and all you see is that. And the first thing you know to do is what? look at the color map. Is there a color map in this picture? No there is not. So you're going to immediately look for the answer unable to determine because you do not have your map or your dictionary to figure out what's going on. That is a trick question. A lot of people will jump to the conclusion they'll just say oh blues away blues away. Not always. And you need the map to determine that. If the map is not there, unable to determine. All right, Doppler packets. Uh, this is our kind of like what, how much information we want to use to determine these blood cell velocities. <coughs> uh, with color Doppler, multiple ultrasound pulses are used to accurately determine blood cell velocities. 
Uh, these pulses are called a packet or an ensemble. Uh, the larger the packets or the large number of pulses, um, they have two advantages. In other words, we're putting a lot of a lot of information. We're using a a lot of the machine to use more colors to give us more information about these velocities. Uh, we get more accurate velocity measurements and then it, be, it becomes more sensitive to low flow the larger we use these the larger the number of pulses in these packets. However, when we learned before like say for line density if we put a, lo a lot of lines in the image or we put a lot of pulses in the image or a lot of foci what are we going to do? <coughs> what are the disadvantages of larger packets or the larger number of pulses? Well you should already know it takes more time to acquire the data reduced frame rate a decreased temporal resolution see how easy this is it's the same exact story the more things we do at once the more time it takes to acquire that data and the more time it, it, it takes uh, to make a frame therefore reducing our frame rate and it decreases our temporal resolution or our movie. Uh, packet size therefore must be carefully selected to balance the two competing interests of color Doppler which is we want accurate velocity measurement but we also want an adequate temporal resolution. No different from just plain black and white grayscale imaging. Um, we want a very detailed picture but we also want very good temporal resolution so we have to meet in the middle somewhere. Remember color Doppler measures mean velocity. Okay, it just kind of jumbles them all together and we get an average. Spectral Doppler uh, pulsed and continuous wave measures peak velocity. This will just be a color picture in other words. This will be the waveform. That's what I want you to think about we get that peak velocity. It becomes a number then, not just an average. Uh, note, just like I said, when you see spectral, think that's the think of that waveform. That's what we're getting. Uh, power Doppler. And I think this is the last of our Doppler. Our Dopplers, actually. Uh, figure 1925. Very good pictures in the book. Um, it only identifies the presence of a Doppler shift. Again, it's just telling us that one is there. That's it. It does not, does not evaluate speed or even direction. It just tells us that there is a Doppler shift there or some sort of flow presence. Uh, it is a form of non-directional Doppler. Why? Because I just told you it doesn't evaluate direction. It is also called energy mode or color angio. <coughs> um, most often you'll see power Doppler. Um, it uh, processes signal strength or amplitude only. It is related to the number of moving blood cells. It's just telling you what's there. Okay, This is a power Doppler picture. Notice it's pretty much one color from darker to lighter. Um, this is the kidneys or a renal. Kidneys right here. We put the power Doppler on and I just dropped my drumstick but that's okay I got another one. Uh, we put the power on and we see it light up right here. Okay. There are times where you will use this and the times that you will use this will be in instances of uh, let's say for example you're looking at a, a much smaller mass or a um, you know uh, something that that you want to determine flow but it's not important to know direction or it's not important to know how fast something is you just want to prove that there might be some power Doppler there if it's in an odd place or some flow there excuse me if it's in an odd place you'll put power Doppler on and it's it's very sensitive to these low flows that 
that it will light up if it's there. If you want to really prove if there's flow there or not. If there's a question of the color Doppler doesn't pick it up or you're worried that color Doppler's not working for that instance. <coughs> there are three advantages of power mode. It is of course uh, increased sensitivity to low flow or velocity such as venous flow or in very small small vessels where color flow is having a hard time picking that up. Uh, it is unaffected by Doppler angles unless the angle is exactly 90 degrees. It doesn't matter how you're holding that probe it's, if, it's, if it's not at 90 degrees or if it's at 90 degrees that's the only time it matters. Doppler angles don't, aren't affected by this because we're, again we're not showing velocity or direction we're just showing the presence of a Doppler shift. There is absolutely no aliasing. Why? Because there's no velocity information. The velocity information is ignored. There are three disadvantages of power mode. Uh, one is the obvious. Well, we can't measure velocity or direction. But that's okay. These, we use this in instances where that is irrelevant. It doesn't matter. But it is considered a disadvantage. Um, lower frame rates or reduced temporal resolution than conventional color flow Doppler. So, <coughs> you know, we're using much, many more pulses or much more information to gather to gather power Doppler information over color flow. So of course that is going to reduce our temporal resolution. It's going to take our T frame is going to increase thereby in decreasing our frame rates. Uh, it is susceptible to motion of the transducer, patient, or soft tissues which may result in burst of color or flash artifact. Um, I'll show you this when I get back, um, but even somebody breathing or moving different, it, it kind of like every the whole screen flashes up and you have to kind of wait for it to reset almost. Um, it's very, very, very sensitive. So you know moving tissues can create movement so or that that Doppler shift or that that pseudo Doppler shift and it will pick it up and that will make sense when I show it to you um, Doppler artifacts Let's, they've got a few of these uh, these are you know an artifact is a disturbance within the image that is either not real an error or it, artifacts are good in that sometimes they confirm certain pathologies. <coughs> and we will learn that when we get into uh, the DUS part. Um, just like I showed you a gallstone and I said what was the dark area immediately behind the calcification and Jamie answered a shadow. Well that is absolutely correct. A shadow is an artifact. In this case it confirmed that that was a stone or calcified structure. Um, sometimes with with grading lobe artifacts <coughs> we know that those are actual errors and that they're not real and we've talked about that before. So number one we're going to talk about in Doppler artifacts is ghosting and clutter and they bundle these two together for a reason. Uh, these are very low Doppler shifts created by moving anatomy uh, such as heart muscle or a pulsating vessel wall. Again, that's a definition. Uh, on spectral display, it's called clutter. Uh, figure 1926 has a picture. Remember, waveform or spectral display, it is called clutter. On a color Doppler, it is called ghosting artifact. So they're the same thing. Just clutter relates to spectral, ghosting relates to color flow. And figure 1927 is a, is a shows a picture of that. Uh, so how is clutter or ghosting artifact eliminated? You know, no different from, uh, or this is similar to the question we asked. Well, okay, we know how to get rid of grading lobe artifacts. We know how to use our, our time gain compensation or our total gain compensation 
and our, our amplitudes or our gains, amplification or gain to get rid of some of those artifacts. Well, how do we get rid of this clutter or ghosting? There's something specifically called a wall filter. Uh, this eliminates those low frequency Doppler shifts resulting from moving anatomy um, rather than from moving blood cells. So it's it kind of like <coughs> it serves as a reject in that we can eliminate the moving anatomy part and allow the red and mo the, the moving blood cells to occur. We're rejecting what we don't want. Uh, wall filters eliminate low frequency Doppler shifts around the baseline on a spectral display. Look again at figure 1926 and you'll noted, notice the black space along the bottom of that waveform we kind of make it disappear from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen you'll notice the difference. All we're doing is we're trying to get rid of that that which we don't want. Uh, they eliminate color arising from Wall filters eliminate color when it's on the color picture arising from slow velocity reflectors. Sometimes we'll get, it almost looks like if you look at the top of 1927, we get that, that color leaking out of the vessel. Well, we know blood is not leaking out of that vessel because it doesn't look that way, and we'll learn that. I don't expect you to know that now, but it's, it doesn't just spot out like that. So when we use our wall filter in the color flow case, we can see how, how easy we clean it up, how clean those walls are at the bottom of the picture. That's exactly what we do. We reject all that stuff outside that's going on. <coughs> this is an example of the wall filter. If you can see this, notice that I'm rejecting all of this along the baseline right here, okay? And I'm getting rid of that. For whatever reason in this picture, they didn't want all of this clutter down here. They just wanted to see the nice waveform. Now this is a very old picture, but it tells the story. Uh, there is something called crosstalk. This is a special form of mirror image artifact. It arises only with spectral Doppler, or when we're using that waveform to evaluate uh, Doppler or Doppler signals. It appears as an identical Doppler spectrum both above and below the baseline. Figure 1928 is a perfect example. It's, it's just a mirror image and because and, the bottom part above the line is what we're looking at but you see how the waveform is directly below on the bottom is directly above, uh, below the above one. It's not shifted over. It's a mirror image. It's just flipped down. <laughs> the true flow pattern is unidirectional. In other words, that picture, blood flow is going towards the transducer, but we're getting that mirror image below as well. Hence, the flow appears bidirectional, but it is not. So this is a bit of crosstalk right here. I see my waveform and that's what I'm looking at, but I also get this mirror image top and bottom underneath it. And the bottom of the image is right here, otherwise this would extend down a little more. But I'm getting that mirror image so I know that that is not real or what they call a crosstalk artifact. Uh, spectral analysis and we talked about this this is that waveform um, it is important to understand that within a sample volume or gate all blood cells do not travel at the same speed or direction reflections arising from a mass of moving blood cells are complex with many Doppler shifted frequencies Blood is layered. We know that. We talked about laminar flow. So a spectral analysis, um, it is a tool that breaks the complex signal into its basic building blocks and identifies the individual velocities which make up the reflected Doppler signal. Here we see, these are just examples, we see top left, 
the what creates most the red the group of red blood cells that create most of this image are uniform and are represented by the bright lines here here it's a little bit easier to see most of the the blood cells are grouped together we even get a little more scattered out where the ones way down here are kind of doing their own thing but for the most part this is a uniform wave <coughs> and down here at the bottom there's many more bunched up uh, see how the see how these have a little window underneath the waveform that window is filled in here so many more red blood cells are making this image right here it's kind of filling in the gaps that's all that is saying It's taking into consideration all of those velocities those many individual velocities that make up the reflected Doppler signal uh, there are two methods of spectral analysis that are currently used one is called the fast Fourier transform or FFT this is a digital technique used to process both pulsed and continuous wave Doppler signals <coughs> the advantages exceedingly accurate very very accurate it displays all individual velocity components that make up the complex reflected signal okay uh, remember <coughs> excuse me this is going to help you this sentence right here is going to help you determine fast Fourier transform when you see this immediately link both pulsed and continuous wave signals to that uh, as opposed to autocorrelation this is also a digital technique used to analyze color flow Doppler so when you see autocorrelation link color flow to it <clears throat> and that's the way the questions are going to be directed autocorrelation is used with color flow Doppler because of enormous amounts of data that is processed a whole bunch of data uh, however autocorrelation is less accurate accurate but substantially faster than the fast Fourier transform so if I ask which one's faster it is autocorrelation if I ask you which one is more accurate it's fast Fourier transform and you know why just simple uh, relating it to what it's used for will answer those questions <coughs> anemia and Doppler um, can a patient be so severely anemic that a Doppler exam cannot be performed you remember we talked about hematocrit and what was normal do you remember what the normal percentage was anyone that's right 45 percent is normal so anything above 45 percent means that that blood is going to be a lot thicker anything below that 45 percent that blood is going to be a lot thinner or less viscous um, no a patient cannot be so severely anemic that the Doppler exam can't be performed it has no relevance to it red blood cell concentration will not affect the ability to successfully perform a Doppler exam why because we can still see or we can still Doppler evaluate moving blood regardless of how thin or thick it is table 19 6 on 324 breaks down Doppler and modality roles from continuous wave pulse wave color flow and power mode um, very simple table easy to read no worries uh, and last but not least diagnostic indices spectral Doppler displays blood velocities throughout the entire cardiac cycle <coughs> in other words we have the contraction and relaxation of the muscle hence we get the waveform see how simple that is I know you can see me back there hello that was kind of scary wasn't it yeah it's that's because it is now one o'clock in the morning 
and I'm very tired. However, that's okay. It's because I love you. Uh, back to diagnostic indices. Spectral Doppler displays blood velocities throughout the entire cardiac cycle. Uh, arterial waveforms are pulsatile. Distinct characteristics are observed during systole, uh, the cardiac contraction, and diastole, or that the resting phase. Uh, there are two math formulas that have been developed to describe the arterial waveform. One is the resistive index. This is a quantitative Doppler derived measurement of vascular resistance of a segment of the arterial system. That's a big lengthy blah 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 but it basically just just tells us how we measure the waveform. Um, it is useful in establishing the diagnosis of an uh, of arterial stenosis. It's a ratio it does not have units. Just learn this for definitive purposes and and that's really all we're going to use this for and we're going to learn to recognize this formula. Uh, the RI is equal to velocity max minus velocity minimum divided by the velocity max. So it, it's, it's very easy to recognize that formula. Stick velocity in there, max minus min divided by max and on table 1931 shows you a pretty waveform where the max is, where the minimum is, and it's as simple as that. We're not going to do this, we're just going to learn to recognize it, but if you look at that waveform in the book, this is going to be the max, and this is going to be the minimum, okay? And the book shows you that. And so we go max minus min divided by max, and we get our resistive index. <coughs> and last but not least, pulsatility index, or the PI. The definition is that it is similar to the RI, but it basically just throws mean into the math. So, very similar to RI, if you see mean, just related to pulsatility index and you'll be fine. That formula is going to be the velocity PI is equal to the velocity max minus the velocity min just like resistive index however we're going to divide <coughs> by the mean velocity and if we draw our waveform we have our max and I'm going to show you in a second we have our min and then we're going to throw that mean in there okay and that's what they're showing you in the book on figure 1932 so we have our max our min and we then throw mean into the equation and divide so it is more difficult to calculate however the beauty of this is that modern day uh, supposed to be modern day uh, technology provides automatic provides this for us automatically so learn to recognize the formula learn to recognize that formula <coughs> know the definitions and you'll be fine there are some advantages of this RI of the resistive index and pulsatility index and in that both are math mathematical measurements rather than subjective descriptions Everybody understands what subjective means. Um, you know, it's accurate. It's not my opinion. Subjective is being sort of opinionated um, versus just being accurate or even objective, uh, if that makes sense. Uh, both depend on waveform shape, not the actual measurements. The formula compares only one velocity to another. Only the shape is needed for that. We just need a peak and a diastole. And thus the calculation is unaffected by the Doppler angle. And again, we will select these areas and the machine does the rest.
Amen. See Jesus with his little physics book. Thank you very, very much for for hanging in there with me. Um, watch these over and over as as many times as you need, uh, and and you'll be fine. We'll talk about it in detail. Please write down any questions that you have, and 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 text me or 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 whatever you have to do and I will do my best to answer them accordingly uh, and you can share it with the rest of the class when you get there and we'll elaborate for a couple of days when I get back uh, you'll be fine don't worry you should feel that it's not near as intimidating as 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 you thought it may have been or it may have appeared um, it is a lot of information, but it's a lot of what you already know that you can apply to this. So hang in there. Uh, have fun. I hope you had fun doing CPR. You're all CPR certified now. Um, which, uh, I mean, I hope that we don't ever have to use that, but I don't know what I'm saying. I'm babbling now. It's it's late. Um I'll see you guys when I get back. Please call me or text me if you need anything. Watch these videos and have a great, fantastic week.